king. Ja, okay, gut. Alle können meinen Bildschirm sehen, das ist wunderbar, dann können wir ja direkt anfangen. Also, gut, dann herzlich willkommen zu unserer heutigen Stunde. Today we're going to talk about demystifying confusing German verbs. Hosted by myself, für die, die mich noch nicht kennen, for those who don't know me yet, ich heiße Salome, my name is Salome, and I'm the founder of Speak Fluent German. And before we get started with today's lesson, just a few quick details about me so you know also who I am and why I'm qualified to be teaching you today. So basically, I was born and raised in a really tiny village near Frankfurt. So German is my mother tongue. I also graduated from university in Germany, specifically university in Mannheim. And then I started tutoring German to native speakers because believe it or not, German is also difficult for native speakers. Um, And then 2016, I moved to Hong Kong and started teaching to non-native German speakers as well. So I was teaching German, or I am teaching German as a foreign, foreign language. I'm also certified by the Goethe, Goethe Institution as a German teacher, and I'm a language lover myself. So I uh, know how it feels like to learn a new language from scratch. Today, I speak five languages, um, so German, English, Mandarin, Cantonese, and French and I love to share my experience with you guys not only from a teacher's perspective but also from a language learner perspective because I think there are some differences sometimes when it comes to that. My mission today now with um, this channel Speak Fluent German on YouTube as well as the Instagram account is to teach German to expats efficiently and effectively combining my years of experience with teaching German, but also, as I mentioned, just now learning languages. So I've developed my own effective and efficient strategies to teach German, which is what I'm sharing on these platforms. So definitely take some notes today, grab a notebook and a pen. We're going to have a quiz at the end of um, today's lesson. So if you are good with taking notes, you'll have better chances in getting the right answers for the quiz. Um, Also pour a tea, coffee or water if you want to and put your phone or any other distractions away. So I highly recommend watching the whole lesson on um, desktop as well. So you'll see all of the slides um, in, in, in a bigger size. It might be more convenient to take notes and all these things. All right, so let's get started with um, these three words of, of verbs that are oftentimes a bit confusing because they mean exactly the same in English, yeah? Benutzen, nutzen und verwenden. All of these three mean to use in English. So oftentimes the question is then, okay, if all of these three mean to use in English, then what's the difference? Today we're going to talk about the difference here. So benutzen is used for concrete objects, all right? So when we're using concrete objects, like using a computer, a phone, um, any kind of equipment, tools, all these things. Zum Beispiel, for example, ich benutze den Computer. I use the computer, right? So a computer is... Uh, an object basically. So when we're trying to say that I'm using the computer, we need to use the verb benutzen. Or for example, benutzen Sie den Aufzug. Der Aufzug is the lift. Yeah, so use the lift. Benutzen Sie den Aufzug. So nutzen, however, also means to use in English, but it's used for abstract things. It's things like, for example, to use your time or to use a chance to use an opportunity. All of these things aren't like concrete objects that we can touch, right? But they are more like abstract things. So in those cases, we use nutzen instead. Zum Beispiel, wir nutzen die Zeit zum Deutsch lernen. We're using the time for learning German. I can also say, sie nutzt die Chance, um, whatever chance there is, sie nutzt die Chance, um Deutsch zu lernen, for example. She's using the chance to learn German. Oder um, er nutzt die Möglichkeit. Er nutzt die Möglichkeit. He's using the opportunity. Yeah, so for abstract things, we would use nutzen. 
So the third one is verwenden. And verwenden also means to use, but it sounds a lot more formal, all right? It's very similar to benutzen, um, but it, as I mentioned, it sounds a bit more formal. So I can say, for example, ich verwende das Messer zum Schneiden. Yeah, I'm using the knife for cutting. So as you can see, verwenden is also used with um, objects, but it just sounds a lot more formal. So you'll oftentimes find verwenden in instructions, for example, or manuals for certain things, like how, if it's described how to use a certain um, object or like recipes, for example, you'll also find verwenden um, more often instead of benutzen. Another example is diese SIM-Karte. Diese SIM-Karte kann man nicht fürs Ausland verwenden. One can't use the SIM-Card overseas. Das Ausland is overseas. Yeah. Um, genau. So this is basically the difference between those three. We use benutzen for actual objects, verwenden as well. Verwenden just sounds a little bit more formal than benutzen. And nutzen is used for abstract things like using the time, using a chance, using an opportunity. Okay. Das nächste, the next verbs that are oftentimes a bit confusing as well is the difference between bezahlen and zahlen. And in the defense of every German learners, the colloquial way or how it's oftentimes used in real life is um, without any difference. So oftentimes in real life conversation in a more colloquial speech, we will actually use these two as synonyms. For, so for German learners, it's very difficult sometimes to differentiate, okay, when do we use, like what's the rules here, right? Because when we listen to it, oftentimes both are used as synonyms, but there are some rules for, which we are going to talk about today. Zum Beispiel, for example, bezahlen technically means to pay someone for a certain object or service or anything like that. So bezahlen is used to pay money to someone or when you receive an item or a service and give money in exchange. So the focus here is more on the service and the item compared to like the actual money, right? For example, zum Beispiel, er hat die Bücher bezahlt. He has paid for the books. Er hat die Bücher bezahlt. So the focus is more on the books rather than um, the price of the books, yeah? Or, die Arbeit wird gut bezahlt. The work is well paid. Die Arbeit wird gut bezahlt. And then zahlen is referring to pay something. Zahlen is used when you're using currency or money to pay for something. Zum Beispiel, die, die Stadt zahlt einen hohen Preis für die neue Infrastruktur. Die Stadt zahlt einen hohen Preis, a high price. Yeah, so here zahlen is directly referring to the amount or the money. Für die neue Infrastruktur, for the new infrastructure. But again, as I mentioned in real life, oftentimes both words are kind of used as synonyms. And I would also like to take a look at some useful phrases that you can use in daily life. Zum Beispiel. And in these cases, we can actually, um, you know, exchange those two as well. So we can say, if you're in a restaurant, zum Beispiel, im Restaurant, um, da können wir sagen, wir möchten zahlen. Wir möchten zahlen. Oder wir möchten bezahlen, bitte. Ja, wir möchten zahlen oder wir möchten bezahlen. Or zum Beispiel in einer WG, in der WG, WG means Wohngemeinschaft, it's a shared flat basically. If you are sharing a flat with someone and you're, you want to know, okay, have we actually paid rent this month already? You can ask, haben wir die Miete schon bezahlt? Haben wir die Miete schon bezahlt? Die Miete bezahlen, ja, yeah, die Miete is the rent. Um, oder, ich habe am Montag die Steuern bezahlt. I paid the taxes on Monday. Ja, die Steuern are the taxes. Gut. The next two confusing verbs that also 
basically mean the same thing in English, are bekommen und erhalten. Both kind of mean to get something or to receive something. There is a difference though. So erhalten sounds a lot more formal and a bit distanced. Yeah, there's actually another word uh, or another verb that also means to get or to receive, which is the word kriegen. And kriegen is even less formal than bekommen. Yeah, so if I had to put it on a ranking, kriegen is the least formal, bekommen is just like a casual expression, and then erhalten sounds a lot more formal and um We use it like, for example, to receive a letter or an email or a package, zum Beispiel. Ja, schauen wir uns mal ein paar Beispiele an. Let's take a look at a few examples. Die Kinder bekommen an Weihnachten viele Geschenke. So the kids receive a lot of presents on Christmas. Here it's fine to use it because like Christmas and um, like the holidays, it's a casual situation that we're talking about. Sie haben ein Paket erhalten. They have received a package. Yeah, they have received a package. So for package, emails, letters, all these things you can use erhalten if you want to sound a bit more formal. So, das nächste, bearbeiten und verarbeiten ist auch manchmal ein bisschen schwierig zu unterscheiden. So bearbeiten, just in general, arbeiten means to work. Yeah, arbeiten means to work. And then in German, we oftentimes have these so-called prefixes that when you add these to a word, sometimes they can change the entire meaning of a word. Just like earlier, bekommen means to receive, to get, has nothing to do with the word common, yeah, on its own. Um, common on its own means to come, right? And then be common means to get or to receive. So these prefixes in front of the verbs can sometimes really change the entire meaning of the sentence. And we really need to pay attention that we're using the correct ones. Also bearbeiten und verarbeiten. Bearbeiten means to handle or process something, yeah? Um, it refers to something that is changed without adding any new material. Zum Beispiel, ich bearbeite die Fotos mit dem Handy. Yeah, I'm editing the photos with the phone. Or another context where we use this as well is like for formalities, to process certain documents or applications, formal things like at the office. Zum Beispiel, das Amt wird den Antrag bearbeiten. Ja, das Amt wird den Antrag bearbeiten. Das Amt is the office, der Antrag is the application. And in this context, it just means that the office will process the application. Verarbeiten. Verarbeiten refers to something that is changed into a new thing. So very often like in... processing fabric and it becomes clothing all right so it's changed into something new along with another materials perhaps or to pro or we can also use it um we can also use the arbeiten if we want to say that someone is processing an experience yeah let's take a look at some examples so Are we still connected? I think I just uh, disconnected. Are we back? <laughs> I think my internet just disconnected for a second and Can you let me know in the chat box real quick if we are oh, okay? Vielen Dank, Beatrice. I think I just disconnected, but now we're back. Okay, alles gut. Wunderbar. Dann können wir ja weitermachen. Um, ihr könnt auch ruhig eure Fragen stellen. Um, so while I'm presenting, I can't actually see the chat box. So what I'm going to do now, we'll have a, a few minutes. 
after the lesson to go through some of your questions. Yeah, and then we'll, we'll um, go through the questions and answer them after, after the, the lessons and the quiz and so on. Because while I'm, while I'm going through the slides, I don't see the chat box. Okay, so also ich war stehen geblieben bei bearbeiten und verarbeiten. Um, genau, so for fair arbeiten, we use it to handle or to process something in terms of like changing it into something new, okay? Zum Beispiel, um, die Firma verarbeitet das Holz zu Möbeln, yeah? The company processes the, the wood to furniture. So we change um, this, this material into something new. Or as I mentioned, um, you can also use verarbeiten if you want to express that you're processing an experience. Zum Beispiel, wir müssen die neuen Eindrücke erstmal verarbeiten. Wir müssen die neuen Eindrücke erstmal verarbeiten. So we have to process the new, uh, new impressions. Yeah. Wir müssen die neuen Eindrücke erstmal verarbeiten. When you're moving to somewhere new, for example, a new city or a new country, um, and there are lots of impressions going, going on and you, it's just a lot to process, and you can say, ich muss die neuen Eindrücke erstmal verarbeiten. So first I need to process everything. Um, in case you're watching this and you feel like you find all of these verbs still a bit difficult or it's a bit difficult to follow or to understand, you should definitely check out my course for beginners. This is the only course I have at the moment and I get asked all the time when it's open again for enrollments. So I'm really excited to announce that we're open again for enrollments. Um, so let me just quickly run through that and explain for whom this course is for. Don't go anywhere because we still have a few verbs to go and also the quiz and the free workbook at the end of today's lesson. But just because I get this asked all the time when my course is opening again for enrollments, I just want to briefly dive into this real quick. So the course is only suitable for a very specific type of students. That's why we're going to take a look for whom the German fluency program is for. It's for you if you are relocating to Germany, Switzerland or Austria and you want to fully integrate into your new home. It's for you also if you are already living in one of the Dach countries and you are done with struggling to speak German. You need a proven roadmap to get there and you want to learn smarter and not harder. You want to have better job opportunities or higher chances of being accepted by universities. You feel overwhelmed by grammar's complexity. You know that you have to put in the hours um, that are required to learn a language, but you want to also do it without using boring textbooks. And you're ready to take learning German seriously and you want to build a lasting connection with the Dach countries. So if any of these points sound like you, you are invited to apply. You can basically go to the um, to my website, to the link speakfluentgerman.com slash apply. And um, we, you will be able to fill out a short form. The short form takes around two minutes to fill out. It's just a few brief questions. And then you can um, basically schedule an appointment with uh, me, either me or my team. And then we're going to discuss together if this um, is a good fit for you in terms of um, your language learning goals as well. The German fluency program is not for everyone, as I mentioned earlier, so it's not for you if you have already accomplished a solid A2 level of proficiency in German. So it is um, specifically for beginners. So if you are at a B1 or B2 level, unfortunately, this is not for you. I'll have other courses coming um, soon for that level. It's also not for you if you think learning German is a nice to have and not an essential skill for life in the Dach countries. You're happy staying in your own bubble and don't really want to build a lasting connection in the country, which is also totally fine, but then in that case, my course is not the right fit for you. You think you can increase your job opportunities with English alone, which is definitely not the case. There are some jobs where you um, can, you know, be successful with English only, but it's a very, very small percentage. I just read an article the other day that said that around 93% of companies actually require you to have at least a B1 level, which is a conversational level. 
And it's also not for you if you don't have the time or motivation to learn a language or you think you can only make progress with a one-on-one -on -one tutor, which is definitely not the case. So my students inside the program can prove that that's um, not necessary. And sometimes actually a little bit hindering if you just um, study with a one-on-one -on -one tutor. You think you can learn all you need from free apps and YouTube. So YouTube is a great place to get started, especially with workshops like today, right? But what you need to realize is that you only learn a tiny friction of what you actually need to become confident and conversational on YouTube or free apps and so on. So if you are looking for something to seriously level up your German skills as a beginner, then you are invited to apply and will work very closely to help you reach your language learning goals. Okay, so weiter im Text. Um, let's continue with the next verbs. Mieten und vermieten. All right, so mieten means to rent. And we use that in regards to the person who rents a place, right? Or it doesn't have to necessarily be a place. It can also be other things like a car, um, a computer. Like sometimes you can rent... Um, like devices, right, for work or whatever it is. And then we would use meeting. Fair meeting is the exact opposite. It basically means to rent out, yeah? Also, for example, if you're renting someone else's place and you're der Mieter, and if you're the person renting out, then it's der fair Mieter. Also, zum Beispiel, wir mieten ein Auto. We rent a car. Ja, wir mieten ein Auto. We can also say, wir mieten eine Wohnung, wir mieten ein Zimmer, ein Haus, uh, einen Computer, einen Laptop, um, was auch immer es ist, das wir brauchen für eine kurze Zeit oder für eine gewisse Zeitperiode. Uh, ja? And then vermieten is used in reference to the person who rents out an object. Zum Beispiel, wir sind für drei Monate im Ausland Deshalb vermieten wir unser Haus. So we're overseas for three months. That's why we're renting out our house. Deshalb means that's why. And it's placed on position one. So it has to be followed by the verb right afterwards. Deshalb vermieten wir unser Haus. Gut. Treffen und sich treffen. We had this in last week's... Um, lesson as well, but I find this actually quite important because we use it so many times in our daily life and I oftentimes hear German learners confuse this. So treffen can stand on its own, but it also can be reflexive, yeah? And we use treffen as a non-reflexive verb if we're meeting someone by coincidence. So we basically bump into someone. Zum Beispiel, wir haben heute unsere Nachbarin in der Stadt getroffen. So getroffen is the past participle of um, treffen. Ja, wir haben getroffen. Wir haben heute unsere Nachbarin in der Stadt getroffen. So that means we met our neighbor downtown today, but by coincidence. So we didn't mean to meet her. We just bumped into her. Ja? Sich treffen if it's reflexive, however, means to meet someone on purpose. So you have scheduled something before, it's planned. Zum Beispiel, ich treffe mich am Sonntag mit meinen Freundinnen zum Kaffee trinken. So I'm, me I'm meeting my friends on Sunday for coffee or for drinking coffee. Ja, ich treffe mich am Sonntag mit meinen Freundinnen zum Kaffee trinken. Gut. Dann tauschen, austauschen und umtauschen. Auch ein bisschen kompliziert manchmal. So tauschen means to exchange and it is used if you give something away in exchange for something new. Yeah? Zum Beispiel, wir können tauschen. Ich gebe dir meinen Sticker und du gibst mir deinen Sticker. So in English, we can also say or basically translate it into to swap things. We can swap. I give you my sticker sticker, and you give me your sticker. Yeah, not quite sure who did that in, in, um, in kindergarten or in primary school. I definitely had a lot of things to exchange. Ich habe Stickers getauscht, 
ähm, was war es noch? Diddleblätter, Pokémon-Karten, all these things. So for these kinds of things where you're exchanging um, objects and you get something in return for that, we use Tauschen. Austauschen is used when we're exchanging something without losing anything. It can be all, and it can also be used for exchanging opinions. Ja, zum Beispiel, lass uns Telefonnummern austauschen oder wir können unsere Meinungen austauschen. We can exchange our opinions. Okay. And then umtauschen is oftentimes used for returning something and exchanging it for something else in the store. All right. So it refers to exchanging or replacing an item from the same shop, zum Beispiel. Jährlich werden tausende Weihnachtsgeschenke umgetauscht. Yeah, every year thousands of Christmas gifts are exchanged. Ich weiß nicht, oder Geburtstagsgeschenke zum Beispiel, Birthday presents, if you don't like something, you'll just bring it back to the store. Um, ist es bei euch üblich, that's actually quite an interesting question, ist es bei euch üblich, is it common for you, ist es üblich, um, die Geschenke umzutauschen, also der Person zu sagen, um, dass ihr das nicht mögt und es umtauschen wollt. Is it common to basically tell the person who gifted you something that to sit, tell them that you don't like the gift and you would like to exchange it? Das ist, um, es, es kommt, glaube ich, darauf an. It depends. But I know a lot of friends and families where it's quite common to gift something, but the person keeps the invoice and or the receipt and basically says, tells that per, the person who is being gifted that present, oh, in case you don't like it, I still have the receipt, you can go and exchange it, yeah, or replace it. Du kannst es umtauschen. Schau mal gerade in der, in der, um, in der Chatbox, würde mich mal interessieren, wie das bei euch ist. I'm curious to know how that's for you. Is it common to just bring presents back and to exchange it for something else? Ist das üblich bei euch? Schauen wir mal. Oh. Ihr könnt die Präsentation nicht sehen, das ist ja komisch. Könnt ihr es denn jetzt sehen? Könnt ihr die Präsentation immer noch nicht sehen? Sagt mir mal gerne in der Chatbox Bescheid. Oh, das ist ja schade. Ich dachte, ihr hättet, ihr könntet die Präsentation schon, schon sehen. Hm. Funktioniert es jetzt? Ich habe jetzt noch mal die... Ähm, Präsentation neu geladen. Ich glaube, es war einfach auf der falschen Seite stehen geblieben. Ich warte mal ein paar Sekunden. YouTube ist manchmal ein bisschen langsam. Also Beatrice sagt, bei Tauschgeschenken ist es ähm, nicht normal, aber bei Kleidung ja. 
Okay, jetzt geht's. Okay, gut, jetzt scheint es zu funktionieren. Gut, super. Also ihr bekommt nach dem Unterricht auch noch ein Arbeitsbuch mit ähm, allen Erklärungen von den Verben und so weiter. Ähm, das heißt, es geht nichts verloren. Für die, die das, ähm, die, die Wiederholung schauen, for those who are watching the replay, you will be able to download the workbook um, in the description box below as well. So uh, in case you want to see the notes for the other verbs that we have missed out just now, you'll be able to um, find those in the, in the workbook. Okay, also schauen wir uns jetzt mal ein paar Beispiele zum Umtauschen an. Wenn Ihnen die Hose nicht passt, können Sie gegen Vorlage des Kassens können Sie sie gegen Vorlage des Kassenzettels umtauschen. Ja, man braucht immer den Kassenzettel, das ist ganz wichtig. Der Kassenzettel ist der Receipt. Ja? Also wenn ein Kleidungsstück nicht passt und man möchte es umtauschen, braucht man den Kassenzettel. Gut, so seid ihr bereit für ein Quiz? Dann schauen wir mal, wer aufgepasst hat. So the quiz has multiple choice answers and um, I would recommend to put the number of the exercise uh, first and then your answer so we can identify which answer you're typing because sometimes it mixes up with the next question so just to make sure that we have the correct answers also los geht's via blank <laughs> am freitag um 3 uhr mit sarah we are meeting with sarah at three o'clock on friday sollte es heißen, treffen sich, treffen uns oder treffen euch? Was ist hier richtig? Bin ich ja mal gespannt. Also ist es A, B oder C? Und dann könnt ihr entweder schreiben 1A, 1B oder 1C. Je nachdem, was hier richtig ist. Was ist hier richtig? Ja, ich sehe da schon die richtigen Antworten rauspoppen. Genau, Jörn, richtig, Molka, Terry. Es ist, wir treffen uns um, am Freitag um 3 Uhr mit Sarah. Gut, Nummer 2. Guten Tag. Ich möchte die Hose blank, bitte. Sie ist mir leider zu groß. Hello, I would like to exchange the pants, please. Unfortunately, it's too big. Was ist hier richtig? Ist es A, B oder C? Ich muss, glaube ich, mal ganz kurz die Tür zu machen. Bin ich wieder da. Also, mal schauen, ob wir da schon die richtige Antwort haben. Sollte es in diesem Fall umtauschen, vertauschen oder tauschen heißen? Terry sagt umtauschen. Genau, umtauschen ist hier richtig in diesem Fall. Also es sollte heißen, guten Tag, ich möchte die Hose umtauschen, bitte. Sie ist mir leider zu groß. Hello, I would like to exchange the pants. So in this case, we would use umtauschen instead. So, dann geht's weiter. Peter, blank. Sein neues Smartphone für die Arbeit. Peter uses his new smartphone for work. Heißt es hier nutzt, benutzt oder genutzt? Was ist hier richtig?
sollte es nutzt, benutzt oder genutzt heißen. Übrigens, wenn ihr die Wiederholung schaut, if you're watching the replay, um, you can also participate in the quiz and put your answers into the comments below. I'll be checking them in the next few days. So definitely take this opportunity to join. Ja, ich sehe schon viele richtige Antworten. Molka, sehr gut. Raquel, Catalina, Jennifer. Ja, ich zeige euch die richtige Antwort. Also die richtige Antwort in diesem Fall wäre benutzt. Peter benutzt sein neues Smartphone für die Arbeit. We're using benutzt in this case and not nutzt because benutzen again is used for a specific object. Yeah, and the smartphone is a device. So in this case, we can use benutzen. Nutzen is rather used for abstract things like using the time, using an, a chance, an opportunity. Nächstes, Frau Müller, blank, das alte Haus an ihren Sohn. So if we're trying to say, Miss Müller rents out the old house to her son, should it be vermietet, mietet oder bemietet? Was ist hier richtig? Warten wir einen Augenblick. Es ist A, B oder C. If I'm trying to say, Miss Müller rents out the old house to her son. Gut. Beatrice und Catalina, das ist richtig. Super, Terry. Genau, Raquel hat auch die richtige Antwort. Also Frau Müller vermietet das alte Haus an ihren Sohn. Um, because she's renting it out, right? So if we're renting things out, we use vermieten. If we're the one renting things, it should be mieten, right? So in this case, it would be Frau Müller vermietet. Alles klar. So jetzt geht's ins Restaurant. <laughs> Im Restaurant, was können wir dann sagen, wenn wir die... Bestellung aufgeben wollen. What can we say if we want to make an order? Ich blank das Wiener Schnitzel, bitte. I get the Wiener Schnitzel, please, in this case. Would I say bekomme, kriege oder verkomme? Was ist hier richtig? Ist es A, B oder C? Was ist hier richtig? Mhm. Sehr gut. Femi hat schon die richtige Antwort gefunden. Katalina hat es auch richtig. Jörn hat es richtig. Super. Genau. In diesem Fall sagen wir, ich bekomme das Wiener Schnitzel bitte. Technically, it wouldn't be wrong to say, ich kriege das Wiener Schnitzel. It just doesn't sound very polite. Ja, es klingt nicht so höflich. Okay, ihr habt das alle super gemacht. You all have done really well despite the technical difficulties. Um, so every for every life, I'm also learning and um, improving, hopefully, the, the technical side of, of things as well. Vielen Dank, dass ihr heute... Um, mitgemacht habt und zugeschaut habt. Make sure that you follow me across platforms as well. So Speak Fluent German is on Instagram, YouTube and Facebook. On Instagram, I post daily fun um, like reels with useful phrases. And then on YouTube, we do these lives um, once a week. And also every Tuesday, there's a new lesson for you guys um, to make learning German more fun and easy to understand and if you are a total beginner and you need some help to get started definitely make sure to apply to this German fluency program which you can do uh, through the link speakfluentgerman.com slash apply und dann in diesem Sinne vielen Dank, dass ihr dabei wart und ähm, genau es kommen bald auch wieder neue äh, 
neue Videos. Am Dienstag kommt ein neues Video. So on Tuesday there is going to be a new video. Um, on next week, I haven't quite decided on which day we'll have a fun Easter workshop, which I'm really looking forward to. So we'll be discussing German customs all around Easter, the vocabulary and so on. And I'm also um, very excited to learn about your experience with Easter in Germany. So hopefully we can um, hang out once again next week on YouTube. Just make sure that you subscribe to my YouTube channel. You hit the notification bell. Um, so you get notified every single time I upload a new video or I go live, um, which is quite frequently. So this month we've been going live every single week. And hopefully next time I'll be able to share my screen throughout the whole lesson so you can see all of the slides. Oh, but once again, before I forget, you also get your free workbook. So let me just quickly grab your workbook for the confusing verbs. And in that workbook, you'll find all of the um, explanations and the quiz that we've done just now, the example sentences, everything. You can just simply go ahead and download the PDF there. Um, and then you have all of the notes as well. So even for the ones that where I wasn't able to share the slides. Gut, alles klar, Beatrice. Schön, dass du dabei warst. Vielen Dank, Molka, dass du auch dabei warst. Und dann wünsche ich euch noch einen schönen Tag und ähm, bald ein schönes Wochenende. Es ist ja schon Donnerstag. Wir haben es bald geschafft. We're almost uh, through the week. The sun is coming out here again as well. It was stormy, so stormy earlier. So I'm glad that um, the sun is out now. And I'll probably go for a walk or something. <laughs> Alles klar. Gut, bis dahin, Leute. Macht's gut. Tschüss.